we're a manufacturer and we're using job order costing or even process costing, we're going to need to estimate how much overhead gets applied to each job or each process. And the beginning point for that is to have one rule, one application rate for one pool of manufacturing overhead. When we're figuring out how much it costs us to make our stuff, it's pretty easy to track direct materials. Those are big pieces and perhaps we have a system where our workers have to sign out the materials from a supervisor who's in charge of all the raw materials. It's pretty easy to keep track of the wages on each job because we'll have uh, our employees fill out their time cards every day that tell us which jobs they worked on. The problem is manufacturing overhead, indirect costs. For example, think of the lowest, most degrading work known to man, janitorial service. Oh, I'm standing right here, sir. Oh, yes. The janitor doesn't work on a particular job, he just sweeps up an entire factory. So how much of his wages, how much of his health benefits get applied to each job? There's no way to tell. So we're going to make up an overhead application rate to make a good estimate of it. To create that overhead application rate, we'll estimate our total annual overhead for the upcoming year and divide it by our total estimated driver. Now the driver is some cost or some factor that we think causes us to incur overhead costs. So if we're in a labor intensive business and all our laborers make about the same, we might use direct labor hours as the driver. If we're in a business that's labor intensive, but our laborers earn different wages and the people at the higher end use more overhead, then we'll use direct labor costs. If we're in a business that's highly mechanized, we might use machine hours as our cost driver. All right, let's take a look at this problem. It's pretty typical in that it gives you a lot of information you don't really need. So Agassi Company has three different departments. And each of them has a different rule, a different overhead application rate. It tells us that Department D uses direct labor cost. So here's our total manufacturing overhead. Here's our direct direct labor cost. So to make up our rule, we say our total estimated overhead for the year is a million two hundred thousand. Our total la direct labor cost for the year is estimated to be a million five. We divide a million two hundred thousand by a million five hundred thousand. Those are both dollars, so they cancel the dollar signs cancel each other out, and we end up with eighty percent. So this is the stuff up here for the year, and this is the stuff for January, a particular month. We take our rule and apply overhead using that 80% rule. So we look at our direct labor costs, which are 120,000, multiply them times 80%, and we apply 96,000 from overhead into work in process. So the actual overhead incurred during the month is the 99,000. We only applied 96,000, so we're $3,000 under applied. Hopefully next month will be $3,000 over applied and it will all even out. If it doesn't, at the end of the period, whether that's a month or a quarter or a year, depends on the company, we'll close out a small amount into cost of goods sold. If it's a big enough number, we'll sprinkle some of it in cost of goods sold, some into finished goods, and some into work in process. In Department E, evidently, all the employees make about the same hourly wage. So instead of using direct labor costs, they use direct labor hours in their rule. So they sit down at the beginning of the year, they say our total estimated overhead for the year is a million five hundred thousand. Divided by direct labor hours, which are estimated to be a total of 125,000, gives us $12. So for every direct labor hour in the month, we'll take $12 of overhead and move it into work in process. So we get to January. We look at our direct labor hours of 11,000. We multiply that times 12 and we get 132,000. Our actual overhead incurred was 124,000. So we're $8,000 over applied this month. Hopefully next month will be $8,000 under applied. If we get to the end of the period and there's a big number down here, we'll sprinkle some in work, process, work in process, some in finished goods, and some in cost of goods sold. If it's a small enough number, we'll just close it into cost of goods sold. Finally, Department K of Agassiz Company uh, is more mechanized. So they say that machine hours, the hours that they're running their machines during the month, are going to be a good 
driver of overhead costs. So why don't you pause this video and see if you can figure out the overhead application rate for Department K for the year, and then how many, how many dollars of overhead are going to move from the overhead account into work in process based on the machine hours during the month of January. I hope you got it. Well, they sit down at the beginning of the year, they say total estimated annual overhead is 900,000 divided by 120,000 machine hours means that it's $7.50 per machine hour. During the month of January, they use 10,400 machine hours. So they may incur $79,000 worth of overhead, but they only apply 78,000, so $1,000 under applied for the month of January. So one final caveat, uh, different departments, different companies, different sub uh, sections of certain departments are gonna have different rules. It could be direct labor cost, it could be direct labor hours, it could be machine hours, it could be kilowatts of electricity, it could be anything. So read the problem carefully. What often happens is if students, uh, the first problem they see uses direct labor cost, they think that that's the rule for all companies, for all problems, for all departments. Each department, each company is going to use a different driver in the denominator of that fraction. So just be careful of that and you'll be all set.